So welcome friends, this is Cindy Silva with the Metaphysical Wisdom Podcast. I'm really delighted to have a special guest with us on this episode. It's Tevia Fang is with us. He is the master instructor of White Tiger Qigong. And I've just really been impressed with that organization. I've been participating in classes, find the website very organized, a very high caliber of teaching and instruction. And I, I really feel honored to have Tevia on the show. And I'm so grateful that he's very approachable and willing to share this wisdom with us. So welcome, Tevia. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, yeah, there's something really special about the instruction that I'm finding in the white Tiger Qigong community, and just wanted to have you, the uh, the voice of that community, be heard by my listeners and anyone else who comes across this conversation, and um, also really resonate with your vision for raising consciousness and the background that you have in working with many masters and healing your own body using Qigong, and I'd love for you to share what you want our listeners to know about your journey and how you, um, yeah, how you see Qigong really opening up a lot of doors for healing in the world and um, raising consciousness. Well, I, I was born with chronic illness, and my sister was born with pneumonia. My brother was born with rickets. Uh, I had colon cancer in my family, heart disease, uh, you name it. We pretty much had it. So it seemed like I was born with three strikes against me. And um, my parents didn't want me to be on medication my whole life. They didn't want me to be in hospitals. They didn't want me to be with having to succumb to hospital visits constantly. And so my father did a practice called Qigong and he did it, you know, uh, very recreationally. And he introduced me and, and to a Qigong master and my mother you know, drove me every day after school and I would go and I would train. And this Qigong, it strengthened my mind, my body, my spirit and my organs and I, I was able to overcome a lot of adversity with, with health issues. And those health issues cropped up later in life as well. But the Qigong always helped me through that. Now, fast forward, I was in a car accident, brutal car accident. Doctors told me I had to have surgery on my spine. They said there was no way around it. Surgery on my knee. I was really scared because I know that when you do surgery on the spine, it, it could be a, a one-way road and there's no U-turns in there. So I went to my master. I told him I'm going to have to have surgery soon on my spine. And he said, don't do that yet. Try this exercise. So he gave me this simple Qigong exercise called the wave, which is a gentle undulation of the spine coupled with slow, methodical breathing and relaxing the mind. And little by little, the pain dissipated. And I was in such bad pain that you know, I, if I sat for 30 minutes or more, I, my back was in so much pain. I had to get up or I had to lie down. I couldn't just sit still. And it, it this Qigong, every time I got into that pain, I did the Qigong and I would get up and I felt soothing relief in my back. And it took years to actually completely heal my spine, but I did it. And I did it without surgery. It took me four years for the pain to completely go away. And some people might say that's a lot in time. I just did it five to 10 minutes every day at a minimum, this particular Qigong exercise. But to be able to not have to go through surgery and learn a whole new method of healing was so empowering that I became a true believer in 
in this Qigong. Not because there was, you know, some incredible mysticism around it, but because I actually had effective results that I could witness myself. And now my spine is better than people half my age. So, and I attribute this all to this Qigong. So that was really how I got deep into Qigong itself. And since then, I've had the fortunate circumstance to be able to share this with literally thousands of people from around the world and witness the healing that so many have gone through. And not only healing, but people reaching peak potential. So this Qigong can not only be used for deep healing of the emotions of the physical body, but also re used to reach your maximum potential for what you're capable of. So I've worked with professional uh, athletes, uh, world champion athletes. I've worked with uh, people from all across the spectrum, professional dancers, uh, executives, but also people with cancer, people with difficult to treat illnesses. So I've seen it work all across the board. So I wanted to understand how to disseminate this teaching, these teachings, which oftentimes are deemed as really esoteric, but I knew that there was something grounded in reality that I could share, but I didn't know how to cross that bridge. And that's when I got into neuroscience and sports science. And I met teachers within those realms. And I worked with them to start to mesh and fuse cutting edge neuroscience and sports science with Qigong. And I found, lo and behold, there were so many logical explanations for what was happening that we could, you know, that we would say is grounded in science. And that for me was really opening a door because I spent my youth studying the Eastern mysticism, the Eastern philosophy, even though I, you know, grew up in the West, but I studied that. And then to tie together science with it was really groundbreaking for me. And to be able to share that and show people, this is what you're doing. So, yeah, so that's pretty much, let me know if I go on too long, because I can go off <laughs> all day on this. Yeah, oh, you're just speaking a lot for me. I mean, it's, um, I love this terminology that it's a logical system with mystical origins. I find that I'm attracted to those or those, I attract those kind of systems, Qigong being one of them. And the I Ching and other systems related. Um, and I do love that we are in the time where there's bridge bridges being formed between science and mysticism where they never really were separate, but somehow we have um, we've done that, created a division. And now that wisdom is coming together again. And that's where there's this incredible potential when we blend these philosophies, like blending the right and the left brain, right? To mm -hmm. really create this holistic um, container, if you will, for consciousness to reveal itself and to give consciousness more freedom to express and um, explore its potential through form. Um, so I do love that you've done this in your own life and you're teaching other people to create space in their lives and their bodies for the qigong, the mystery, um, to point us at how it's um, very easy to work with and um, can be predictable and directed and guided. And I, I do love how you, I think, are one person that's really tying this into the the human potential movement in terms of sports and 
I've always seen that connection with the visualization aspects of Qigong, the mindfulness and how Olympic athletes work with bringing their game to the very edge is this idea of using the mind to create a perspective that the body can step into that's beyond its current experience. Hmm. Hmm. Well put, well put for sure. I, well, it's, it's, you know, talking about that, you know, there, I learned the terminology for what we were doing in Qigong. So we have this, this terminology in Qigong, we say Ting Jing, that means listening energy. That's what it directly translates to. So how could I translate into that into a word that makes sense? And that was interoceptive awareness. Mm. Interoceptive awareness is, is being really aware and truly in the moment of what's happening, the sensations in the body and, and feeling that. So my master used to always say Ting Jing. He would just say Ting Jing to start to just, just go into like that meditational state. And it was really, he's talking about interoceptive awareness and becoming aware of what is happening in the body. And so many of us are disengaged from our bodies because we are on social media or on computers all day long. So our awareness is focused outwards all day long. But how often throughout the day do we bring our awareness back inwards to ourselves and pay attention what's happening inside of myself? And bringing that self-awareness inwards starts to open up a whole new world because your body could literally be deteriorating without you even being aware of it because you're, you have external focus all day. So we call external focus yang and internal focus is going yin and more within. And we need a balance between the two. So this Qigong starts to waken you to that inner world of what's happening. And, and many people ask me, what's the difference between say meditation and Qigong? Well, this Qigong has meditation within it. When you move, it's a moving meditation. And when you're still, it's a still meditation. The difference is we use intention through this meditation. So for example, uh, if I'm working on the liver, I will do the wood element. We have wood element Qigong. And I will work on becoming aware of the movement and how it relates to that wood, like swaying like a tree movement, and then the bending of it and how it also rings out the liver. And I start to feel into my liver as I'm ringing out the liver. So this deep bend and this deep twist and feeling it through my meridians and trying to sense my meridians. And people might say, okay, what are meridians? Well, the Taoists say the meridians are like the rivers that flow through the lakes and the oceans, which are the organs. So the meridians essentially connect the organs to the extremities. So you have this flowing energy that runs throughout the body. And the Taoist, in Taoism, we call it qi. But what is qi? And we, that's where I, I found a really interesting correlation. So there was a man named Thomas Myers. I don't know if, if you've heard of his book, Anatomy Trains. Um, I got turned on to it by Chris Kumer, who was my first fascia teacher, because I was showing him uh, our, some of our meridian qigong and some of our qigong where we we open the meridians and dilate the meridians. And he was like, oh, those are like the myofascial meridians. And I'm like, what's that? And he started talking about fashion. He turned me on to this book. So I opened this book. Thomas Myers was a manual therapist and found that there were these connective tissue lines that connected throughout the body from when he dissected cadavers, he found these lines. He started mapping them out and creating drawings of them of what he found. He didn't know anything about Chinese medicine and Chinese meridian maps. Someone told him to compare them and he, lo and behold, they were almost identical. So 
he found that when you coil and uncoil these myofascial meridian lines, they generate an electrical charge that he could measure with a scientific instrument. And this was a really fascinating revelation because a lot of times people were believing that these are just imaginary lines, but they were actually, these are real physical connective tissue lines that are generally generating electricity. And these electrical charges, like you look at those, those meridians, like, like, uh, like telephone wires. I mean, that's a bad analogy, but telephone wires. So wires that are connecting like cables throughout the body and you're sending these electrical charges. Now, how can you direct this electrical charge to where you want it to go? And that's what Qigong does. So through specific movements and what we call the, in sports science is termed as kinetic chains, but in Qigong, we call it using earth energy and heaven energy. So you, you push into the earth right? You push into the earth with the feet and you get this rebound effect that ripples up through the body. I mean, if you just, if you're standing up and you push into the ground with your feet and then try to raise your head up to the sky and feel it lifting, that's a, a, a really simple example of sending the chi through the body, but you're sending an electrical charge through the body by engaging the body. And we use this through twists and undulations. It's really difficult to explain without a visual. So I definitely highly recommend people check out some videos um, that we have so they can get a visual for what, what I mean by this. But these, through this undulation and twisting of the body and through these uh, ripple effects, we have chi rolling through the body. We're sending electrical charges through the body, through the organs and to the extremities. And what the Taoists say, qi is the catalyst for the movement of blood. And so we're essentially getting, we're stimulating deep circulation throughout the body. That's why a Qigong practitioner, after doing Qigong, they have a light sweat, their cheeks are rosy, their palms are, re are red, and you can see that they have good circulation. And we're at, at the same time, we're keeping the fascia elastic. And what, what is uh, elasticity and fascia? So fascia, for those of you who don't know, fascia is this fibery, gluey, spidery web underneath the skin that wraps around the organs, wraps around the muscles, wraps around the bone and becomes the bone. The bone is actually the hardest part of the fascia. And so it's the glue that binds the body together. And as we age, this fascia hardens and becomes more plastic-like. When you're young, it's more elastic. So it has this rebound effect, this elastic rebound effect. So how can we keep youthfulness is by keeping the fascia elastic. And that's what this Qigong does is it keeps it malleable and and elastic. And so you get that rebound and you have deep circulation throughout the body. And this is why these old masters have so much energy and vitality into old age, because they have deep circulation constantly. They also get, you get a lot of circulation to the brain as well through this Qigong. And, and, and that led me down the path of neuroscience to understand that, how that was working and how we were able to effectively relax the nervous system. So let me know if I'm going off on a tangent. You can stop. I love it. Everything you say resonates deeply. And uh, I'm really intrigued by the, the fascia, the soft tissue. And um, I've heard it called Huang, H-U-A-N-G, the Huang. Uh -huh. Does that resonate? Uh, I don't, I haven't heard that before. I haven't heard a Chinese term for fascia yet. Yeah. Um, I've tried to find it. I've asked friends in China. They, they, they don't know a term, a direct translation for fascia. But um, it, when you say Huang, it's, there's, a, there's a word in Chinese that's the word for yellow, depending on, you know, so there's different tones. So mm -hmm. you can change the tone. It will have a different meaning. But one, one meaning is yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and the fascia is actually yellow. And, and so no matter what your skin color is, whether you're black, white, or, or brown, or whatever it is, you, we all have yellow fascia. 
So we all underneath the skin, we all have the same color fascia, which is yellow. So yeah. that's interesting that you use that. And word. it's earth. <laughs> yeah. The color for earth. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Love that. Well, I think that's really um, perfect, this conversation, because there is such a movement in physical fitness. I mean, even with professional athletes, they're moving more and more towards stretching the fascia. I mean, as they're workouts rather than heavy lifting and so forth they're realizing that keeping the fascia limber elastic as you say it helps them prevent injury and move easier and of course um, have more energy so i find that really intriguing they're using a different language but it's the same thing they're tapping into the same resource just not using the same language that we're using. And I'm wanting to go back to what you said earlier about, you know, feeling the wood in the body and the movements and how when we bring, like we are the experience of a formless consciousness integrating with a physical form and where those two meet is sensation. And when we bring our attention to that, sensation it's like we're we're giving consciousness a self-reflecting experience and it's in the now it's in the present it's it's like you say all of our attention is inward we're not dissipating our energy that i feel that there's a really uh, important opportunity and a charge there when we are self-reflecting on how the formless is meeting the form consciousness having an experience of itself in a in a limitation in a, a unique physical expression there is something about that experience that opens us to new possibilities of um being what a, i want to say like um a portal for which consciousness is seeking a form that allows its fullest expression and to have a form that is self-reflective like that um, and dialed in to both the physical and the non-physical aspects feels like the perfect invitation to be um, enlightened, to be a awake to what's occurring in nature all the time. Yeah, that 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 really uh, speaks deeply to me, and. And it really brings me to the concept of relaxing the nervous system, because in neuroscience, they, I learned about the PNS, the parasympathetic nervous system. So you have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest, and you have the sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight. And Qigong gets you so deep, can get you so deeply into the parasympathetic state where you can so deeply relax the nervous system. Then you start to tune in to different energies. You'd start to tune in to different wavelengths, literally. And this is what I believe so many people need to learn in this modern day and age, because in the modern day, the majority of the human race is living in the sympathetic state in overdrive. So if we look at the sympathetic state, which is like putting the foot on the gas, and we look at the parasympathetic state as putting on the brakes, we need a balance between both. But the average person, not at everybody, but the average person who's working in the nine to five job, they wake up with not enough sleep. So there, they've already started to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. Then they have a cup of coffee. Now we're stimulating the nervous system again. And not that coffee's bad, but we're doing it in order to, to wake up. We can't, you know, I talked to so many people, they said they can't function without coffee. And so now we race through breakfast rush. Now we're stim further stimulating the, the nervous system. Then we rush into a traffic jam or, you know, racing to work in a car. Now we're further stimulating the nervous system. Now we get to the, to our job and our boss is 
frustrated, we have deadlines, things are getting screwed up. Now we're further stimulating the nervous system. So now by midday, you're so taxed, you need another cup of coffee to make it through the day. And by the time you get home, you're so wiped out, you have no energy to do anything. So you throw on Netflix and order a pizza and get some beer or something like that. I mean, not everybody's like that, but a lot of people do that. I mean, zoning out is my point. And one thing I've seen that's epidemic is adrenal fatigue. So people are burning out from this lifestyle and it, it's depleting their life force. It's the Jing. The Jing is your life force in Chinese medicine. And you're given so much. Like a like person like me who was born with, you know, unfortunately, uh, bad genetics uh, or weaker genetics, I should say, than the average person, I had to work that much harder to bring my health in up to par where I see a lot of people throwing away wonderful health on this. So what Qigong does is we are able to move the emotions out of the body because emotions are stored as physical memories of the, in the body. And fascia science has proven that. It's like a tree. When you cut open a tree, it has knots in the tree that you can see the trauma that the tree went through. We also hold knots in the fascia from trauma, from emotional trauma, from physical trauma. And the Taoists have been saying for thousands of years, the emotions, the body and spirit are intrinsically connected. There's no separation. So when we do Qigong, what we're doing is we're moving that tension out of the body. We're, it's like squeezing a toothpaste tube Imagine that, that, that analogy or wringing out a towel. So you wring out those toxic emotions that are pent up. You wring out that anxiety that you've had, that worry, that fear, or that stress and that anger. You wring it right out of the physical body. And now when I do that, now I can relax and I can go into my deep meditation state. And when I go into the deep meditation, I am reprogramming the mind. So I, as I, I flush out worry and anxiety and I bring in the antidote emotion in Chinese medicine, the antidote emotion for worry and anxiety is, is feeling nurtured, okay? feeling that nurturing. And I bring that in and I, and I evoke that feeling. And then I bring in the element itself, which is connected to the earth. Anxiety is connected to the earth and the spleen. So I connect to that organ. I connect to the earth. I draw on the energy of the earth. And now I tap into a whole new power source, which is nature, essentially. What it all boils down to is this deep connection with self, with nature. And so now, you know, what people might, you know, I've had hypnotherapists come to my trainings. They say, oh, you're doing hypnosis, self-hypnosis. Yeah, that it, 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 so I see all these connections. I keep finding these connections to, to modern terminology with what we're doing with this ancient practice. That's why I always say the science is finally catching up to the ancient ways. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Wow, we could go on for hours. I was thinking earlier about um, when you mentioned the burnout, I was thinking of the 60th hexagram of limitation and we think of limitation as a negative, but it's actually the way that consciousness has a unique experience of itself through form is through limitation. And when we understand our limitation and we work with it, and instead of moving in the direction of burnout, as you're describing, we have this really wonderful uh, container for spirit to reveal itself. And so this, uh, ancient science that you're referring to connected to the I Ching and the, the changes that we go through in the cycles and the seasons and how do we remain fluid and adaptive to these changes and these limitations in a way that we're dancing. We learn how to dance with the physical reality as spirit. And I love witnessing 
the fluidity of masters practicing Qigong in nature because it is a dance. And when we do the practice, that dance carries on with us out into our world and our life and our relationships. When we go to work or interact with people, there's still this beautiful um, flow that's been stimulated from the practice of ease and effortlessness. If we are aligned with the greater flow, the larger bioflow and the um, microcosmic bioflow in the body become one, and we get brought into the right place at the right time with the right resources to bring our creativity forward and offer something to the world in a generous way that uplifts everything. Hmm. Hmm, I love that. Interesting. You 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 talk about the I Ching and limitations in the sixtieth hexagram and. What do you think that uh, how that applies to to what we're going through now, which is interesting because we're going through such an interesting time period yeah. where we're facing, you know, there's so much, you know, in the news that we, we, we only see fear and, and gloom and doom. But, um, you know, we do see there there is a lot of conflict in the world right now. Yeah. And how can we contribute to the light? to bringing us out of this? What can we do? You know, because people now, I feel like people are made by consuming mass media, they're made to feel helpless. Like they're at the whim of whatever the global event is and what can we do? And that's one of the things that my master said to me is we need to take responsibility for our world that we're living in. And if we don't, then we're going to be facing serious danger. So you know, it's interesting, like, what, how do you feel that the 60th hexagram could apply? Because I, I see there's a lot of applications to it. Yeah. Well, one of the aspects of that hexagram, it's about structure. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the way we've structured society isn't working anymore. Mm. You know, from a cosmic perspective, or, you know, the larger perspective, I see consciousness is everything and it's creative and as it moves through the current structures it's being stifled by mm -hmm. all the red tape and all of the, the ways that we have made ourselves small by separating um, division and so forth and so I see the movement of consciousness um, putting pressure on the current structures so that the, they're going to have to be um, reshaped in order to allow more flow, right? It's, mm. it's like mm. Qigong in the body when you have knots and you're restricted and you're tight and you can't move anymore because everything's dried up or stagnant. You have to go through a restructuring in mm -hmm. order to get the qi flowing again. And mm -hmm. I see that microcosmic version that's happening individually on the mass scale in our systems, you know, um, politically, medically, educationally, financially, all of those systems and the structures no longer serve the next level, uh, the level of consciousness required to come back together in oneness and operate as a larger organism, a synarchy, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that's what I see. And I also um, am a human design analyst. So I see the, oh, wow. the position of Pluto right now is in the 60th hexagram and it happens to be a, a Pluto return for the United States. So we are really experiencing it here. I know you're in Vietnam, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in Vietnam. Yeah, so... Um, it's affecting the whole world, obviously, but particularly the United States. Pluto takes about 250 years to go around the sun, and 250 years ago, approximately, was the Declaration of Independence for the United States, so the birth chart. Um, so in addition to it being in the 60th hexagram on the wheel, it's also at the very end of Capricorn, which is all about structure. 
And I feel like as soon as Pluto enters Aquarius, which is in the next couple of years, um, there's just going to be an incredible acceleration um, because it's moving from Capricorn and Earth sign into Aquarius and Air sign. And as you know, the difference between the way Jing moves in the body, the physical, the Earth versus the um, we could say the mind or air sign, or there's just this quickening that's happening and there's gonna be a huge acceleration, I feel like of obviously technology, but how do we, how do we manage that um, acceleration and still stay present in, in the body? I feel like it's going to be a big challenge. Um, so having a structure in our daily rhythm that works for us to stay grounded, to stay present is, it's one of these things like with Qigong, the way I understand it, it was originally a preventative um, form, right? To prevent getting disease and to, to promote longevity. And then as, um, as it became popular, it was used more for curing illnesses, but it's, when once we've cured the illness, we use it to prevent illness, right? So yes. there's a preventative. Um, I feel like we can use this knowledge of limitation, getting back to your question, as um, a way to apply what we know in a preventative way rather than um, this um, need for... Uh, putting out fires, you know, in, in when it comes to like crisis, how do we avoid uh, unnecessary crisis and suffering? We, mm -hmm. we put things in place in a, in a preventative way. And if we can see already an acceleration coming, that's going to create um, potentially a mass psychosis or a tsunami of emotional trauma, how can we already be putting in place ways to help people navigate that mm. Mm. which is what you're doing with this mm -hmm. white tiger qigong you're you're reaching out to people all over the world and um making it available and it's it's wonderful i i'm you know but very attracted to the style and i'm um wanting to give you an opportunity to talk more about anything else you want to say, but particularly um, your trainings that you offer online. And I'm personally curious why you named it White Tiger Qigong and uh, anything else that you'd like to share. Yeah. Well, we named it White Tiger Qigong. Well, first off, the White Tiger is the king of the Chinese pantheon. And the White Tiger is one of the main constellations in 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 chinese astrology so the white tiger there's a saying when the emperor rules with absolute virtue the white tiger appears it's kind of like in the u.s you have the white buffalo appears when there's you know it's like a it's an it's a positive omen you know so there the white tiger is very very powerful for healing and for positivity for goodness and in traditional qigong you're taught to you're taught different animals different animal movements which comes from the wu people so 5000 years ago when qigong was first created by the wu people they were this tribal shamanic peoples that were watching animals move and watching how they were energized by their movements and so they started creating ritualistic dances where they would go into trance states and start to, you know, imagine, you know, a tribe around a fire dancing and drumming and doing these animal dances and maybe putting on uh, outfits, costumes to, to match that and the power that they were getting from that. It was really empowering them. And so these turned into more formalized rituals and movements. And thousands of years later, 
it started about 2000 years ago, it started to be used in medical Qigong, these animal movements that were developed. And they started combining Chinese medicine. And so for me, I connect with the white tiger. And so that spirit of that animal speaks to me. And I learned uh, the white tiger form of Qigong. And so, and I learned the white tiger breath. White tiger breath is the most powerful breath I've ever learned. And so for me, it was very natural uh, to become white tiger Qigong. Mm. And so, yeah, so that's how it evolved into yeah. that. Yeah, there's a similar um, correspondence to the white lions in Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, my master, he said, find an animal that you really resonate with watch everything you can even go watch some nature shows on it watch how it moves watch how it hunts watch how it lives uh and become that animal <laughs> it's a very interesting concept yeah uh, there's a very good movie um well it's 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 kind of it's it's actually i, I shouldn't say it's a very good movie it's a little bit sad of the of a movie um but it was uh, it was it was about in South America when the I think it was the Aztecs were or the Mayans were trying to dominate the local indigenous groups, and this boy he connected with the with the black jaguar and he was racing through the jungle and he connected with the spirit of the black jaguar and it helped him survive. It's kind of interesting correlation between the Taoist practice of connecting with the spirit of the animal where you could actually see it in, in, in a movie. Mm. So uh, in terms of white tiger Qigong training, what we offer are three distinct systems of Qigong. So I've studied like over 50 different styles of Qigong martial arts and meditation. And I found three that I find are the most effective. They're gonna, gonna get the most tangible results. And so I created that system called the Trinity system, which is the five element Qigong, the eight trigram Qigong and the five animal Qigong. And so I offer teacher trainings online and in person and also master courses for those who aren't interested to become a teacher. We have the master course. And so uh, I have in June, June 21st, we have an eight trigram Qigong master course and teacher training coming up online. And I worked with professional education experts from Stanford University and Harvard University to put together a university style curriculum with this ancient practice to be able to really teach it in a way that people are going to be able to grasp in small chunks, in bite sized chunks. And also, uh, we have an in person five animal Qigong teacher training in November here in Vietnam, for those who are adventurous and want to travel and, and come to Asia. And uh, that's in the mountains uh, by hot springs that we're going to be doing that training, which is the first medical Qigong form ever created by Hua Tuo, who was a Chinese medicine physician over 2000 years ago. Mm. So, yeah, so that's uh, what we have currently. Um, and and, and uh, we have tons of free YouTube videos. Uh, we put out new YouTube videos every single week. Uh, so people can check those out and, um, we have free eBooks and then we have online courses. And as I said, master courses and teacher trainings on top of that. Yeah. Wonderful. And the value is just really, um, I was really impressed with the value and the quality just really, I can see that you're very selective in your teachers that you choose to represent your school. I had the assumption that your school was in Thailand though. Oh, we, we were in Thailand and Thailand shut down. Oh. And, and to the outside world for a long time. And now they they're open, but they have restrictions. And uh, yeah, so they have a lot of restrictions coming out. Vietnam has no restrictions right now. I see. You can come in without any issues. Yeah. 
Okay. So uh, eventually we'll go and teach in Thailand again. Um, but for now we're, we're in Vietnam. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have an invitation to Thailand. We hosted um, an exchange student from Thailand for a year and uh -huh. um, we've stayed in touch with him. He's actually out here working in the Bay Area, um, but nice. he's invited us to come and visit. So I'll we'll have to find out um, where your location is and how close it is. I'd love to come and train with you. Love, love to have you. Would absolutely love to have you come out and train. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I want to ask about the, um, you've written some books too. Um, uh -huh. You have like three books that you've written. Do you want to talk about those and how? Yeah. So the, those books are basically about our different systems of Qigong. So you have the five element, a trigram and, and five animal Qigong. So it basically dives into those systems and, and it acts as an instruction manual, but also gives you the theory behind it and the theory behind our Qigong. And so ebooks are a great way to learn the theory and, and get a snapshot of the exercises. And I recommend for those who like, who like it and want to learn more, they, they do either an in-person training or they take an online course uh, to actually do the movements because it's going to be much easier to follow uh, a video rather than a, uh, than a book. But the books are really good for the to get a view of the philosophy and, and, and to understand what we're doing in white tiger chicle. Mm, yeah. We'll have to look into reading the book. I have a book group since uh, COVID started my Qigong community here in Avila beach where I live in California. We, we jumped on zoom and started reading books together and we're on our sixth book. So We'll have to look into incorporating one of your books for our next round. And well, I'd love to offer uh, a book to your listeners uh, as my gift, the five element Qigong. I can send you the link to that book oh, uh, and then you can give it to your, to your listeners to download. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Thank you. How generous. They'll love it. My pleasure. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else that you'd like to share as we wrap things up here? It's been, I'm just really honored to have you and, you know, reading your bio is so impressed. It's, um, you're rated like one of the top three master Qigong or Qigong masters in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Studied with um, many great masters, including Ken Cohen, who um, I've been in touch with. We've tried to get Ken to come a couple times to Avila Beach to teach, and he's always very willing, but we've run into a couple snags with um, mudslides on Highway 1 and uh, pandemics, but we're going to get him here eventually. And uh, do you ever travel to the U.S.? Uh, not, not these days because of COVID. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I, I do come occasionally to the U.S. And yeah, I remember... Uh, Ken Cohen, when I was very young, um, I studied with him for a time. So he was an influence for me. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I, he wasn't a close instructor of mine, but definitely uh, an influence for me, for sure. And someone I really respect yeah. a lot. He's, he's a, great, a, a great teacher. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you asked for a final message or something I want to say is that yeah. is... Um, one of the things that I believe is that is we are in a pivotal time in human history mm -hmm. and we as a society have a choice to make right now. And we either will go uh, in a direction that could lead to a lot of dangerous consequences, or we can do something different. <clears throat> and you see so many people fighting and polarization within society. And we need to, to buck that trend and we need to change it. And I believe Qigong is one route to do that because what this Qigong teaches us to do is to truly love ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying stroke your ego, but actually love yourself. Like how often do you send loving energy to yourself? with these meditations that we have in this Qigong. 
and the, the movements, we're sending loving vibrational energy to ourselves. And we know that we're made up of 70% water. The fascia is made up 70% water. And if you look at the book, Hidden Messages in Water, you can see that scientific experiment done where you can change the molecular structure of water through intention. Mm -hmm. And so through powerful intention with our meditations and, and Qigong exercises, we can transform ourselves, give love to ourselves and connect with nature, connect with the earth through the five elements. And when we do that, then we can then love our family and friends and this will have a ripple effect outwards, but it needs to start on the individual level and then become a collective effort and movement. So uh, my master said, you know, you know, I wanted to go just train on the mountain by myself and, and not come out and just, just do Qigong. My master said that would be selfish. Mm -hmm. He said, you were given a gift and now you need to share this gift with others. And so, and bridge East and West. And so that's what I want to do. And I want to share this practice with as many people who are open to it as, as possible and make a massive shift in human consciousness, because that's what we need. We need a massive shift in human consciousness to change the direction of humanity. And so this is where I feel that we can really help make a change. Yeah, I so. agree. So the only thing that's going to change is a change in consciousness, is a change in perspective. Mm. I uh, ha had a teacher who said, perspective isn't everything, it's the only thing. Mm. And uh, we definitely need to pivot and merge. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, for, and I, I like what you're saying about the, um, the self love and the, the peace, you know, that inner peace, you know, mm -hmm. our relationship with ourself is the relationship we bring to everything. Mm. And so I like that you're creating the container and the invitation and the instruction and the community to point people in that direction, give them a direct experience of it versus the reading it out of a book alone that we need to, you know, this is what I found with this building of a community is that we study together, but we also practice together. We're not just studying and a philosophy and not practicing it. We're not just practicing and not understanding the philosophy. We're bringing that together and we're doing it and growing together and the, the love and the mutual, um, respect and celebration for witnessing each other's breakthroughs and wanting to share that is really rippling out. And um, I feel that that's a lot of the different pockets of uh, consciousness in the world are, are doing that and coming together. And these islands of coherence are coming together in a, a way that the coherence is growing and becoming more available and more attractive and easier, more easily um, accessible. And you're certainly part of that web. And I wanna thank you for your dedication and uh, the, the rich, deep root of experience you bring forward and the evidence through your own self-healing that you um, transmit through your teaching, through your voice, through your presence. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for creating this podcast. And thank you for inviting me. And I'm honored to be here. Mm. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Tavia. Thank you. And thank you all for listening and tuning in. Please check out whitetigerqigong.com and um, also their YouTube channel, free high caliber video instructions. Um, just well, well done. So I am participating in it and finding a great value in it. So I thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Okay, take care. Bye for now.